Well, hello everybody, and thank you very much for this opportunity to talk about um, the work of the Irish National Committee of the Blue Shield. And a bit like um, Fanula before me, I'm going to give some background into the history of the Blue Shield in Ireland, and then also bring you up to date with work that the current committee are doing. So, as has already been mentioned, um, Life for Us started with the UK and Ireland committees established back in the early 2000s. Um, and as, as both Peter and Fanula said, it was under the chairmanship of uh, this gentleman, um, Michael Ryan, who was then director of the Chester Beauty Library in Dublin, um, that the Irish, the Irish committee was reconstituted. And Lara Joy, who then subsequently became chair of the committee before myself, um, was also a member of Blue Shield in Ireland at that stage. So officially it was 2012. That's the date we have as a kicking off point of when the Irish National Committee was established and recognised officially. So just to give a nod back to all the people who've been members, I put together this slide um, because I think uh, a huge amount of work has been done over the years and we have to acknowledge the work and the drive and the energy of these people listed here. And as you can see, most people um, are from the founding four. We also had um, the Oh, I've got a double bracket there. Um, the CCAAA, um, and that was Cassandra O'Connell, and Cassandra was a very strong member of the committee as well over those eight years. So this is our current committee, um, all lovely, smarty people, and Elizabeth Ann is also here today, so I'm delighted um, that she's joining us. Um, you can see us all there and the organisations that we're affiliated to. And I have a slide later on where I'll talk more about uh, the areas of interest that each of the committee members have and our strengths and what we're currently bringing to the Irish National Committee. So the key objectives really between 2012 and 2020 were to promote the principles and again complete Ireland's ratification of the Hague Convention, um, very like uh, the UK, whilst we had signed up to it and agreed and had been in attendance in 1954. Uh, Ireland was represented by um, an ambassador at the time, uh, Josephine McNeil, um, and uh, a lieutenant colonel, whose name has slipped my mind, unfortunately, it could be in the next slide, and the then director of the National Library in Ireland. Um, so we did sign it and agree to it in principle in 1954, but it took, um, it took a long time, as you can see from this headline from the Irish Times in 2017 to it finally getting signed. Um, and that primarily was the main objective of the Irish National Committee for those eight years. And that's how long it took with a huge amount of effort and a huge amount of consistent lobbying, both with um, various government departments and, and that energy and drive was their focus. Um, but as you can see, it was also to uh, act as a unifying voice uh, and to, to try and, and promote Blue Shield and to raise awareness about it. Um, and that was the work that they did. And so you can see key events that they had. Um, they had a very successful one day seminar in 2014. And actually when I was preparing this um, presentation, I went back and I looked at all the names of who presented and I presented back there in a different, uh, back then in a different capacity. Karen Wagner was there um, Klaus had come over and he presented. But Patricia, who is also a member of our committee today, she presented. So had Susie Bialetti uh, from Trinity College Library. And so you can see even back then uh, the committee was quite good at engaging people who they knew were interested. Um, and and I, I looked back and I thought, gosh, they really were kind of legacy building uh, and thinking forward by, by getting us all involved at that stage and, and presenting on different aspects of cultural property protection and disaster risk management. Then to the committee's um, uh, members who were very strong, both uh, Cathy Daly, who's a university lecturer in Lincoln, but is from County Wexford, uh, and Cathy's main area is cultural uh, or climate change for cultural um, heritage properties. And Lara Joy both spoke, spoke during Heritage Week. And Heritage Week is a week in August in Ireland where the focus, and it has grown wonderfully over the last sort of 15 years, and um, the focus really is on everything cultural um, and museums and galleries and archives and libraries are open up uh, and are really encouraged and financially supported through the Heritage Council of Ireland to create free public events. 
Um, so Blue Shield is always kind of active if we can be within that week um, within our own resources. Then in 2018, we had the first aid for a culture FAC course um, led by ICRON, and that was in the National Museum. And again, that was a bit, for us, that was a bit of another watershed um, moment. A lot of really strong connections were made during that three-day event, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Then finally, in 2018, we had the passing of the Hague, Hague Convention. Um, we marked that in early 2019 with um, a public screening of um, uh, the um, destruction of memory and a, a small event. And then in 2019, we had the first ever CPP training with the Irish Defence Forces. And again, I have a slide that will talk about that. So just to say about the ratification of the Hague Convention, uh, the bill was developed in consultation with the Department of Defence, the then Department of Arts, Heritage, Regional and Rural, R Regional, Rural and Gaeltacht Affairs, and then the Department of Foreign Affairs. And this is where you can find the Act in the House of the Oireachtas website. Um, it's very easy to find it. So it's in the Irish Statute Book. Um, but it was the Convention's instruments were finally ratified and deposited with UNESCO, and that was the work of the Department of Foreign Affairs um, in, on August uh, 17th in 2018. So again, we've taken that as a date since then to try and mark it in some way that um, we always do something on that date in August. So just to talk a little bit about the FAC course with ICOM um, in 2018, which seems like ages ago now, but it was a fantastic three-day event and probably the first um, event that I got involved with as being part of the committee. So we had 24 participants from all over Ireland, from both the heritage sector, the first um, responders, so fire brigade um, uh, personnel were there and from the military as well. Um, and it was a really successful way of blending together um, both cultural heritage profess professionals and first responders. And it was really interesting to see how we all learned from each other and the way we could learn from each other. Um, and we did make incredibly strong connections at that three day course. Um, Aparna Tandon from uh, ICOM came over and led the course, um, but it did have other um, presentations from um, with Kathy Daly and Lara Joy, and then um, a gentleman called Keith Leonard, who's who's very important here because um, he's involved in the National Emergency Network um, in Ireland. And again, through that, we've had um, a strong link and connections in preparing documentation for them. And again, I have, a, I have another slide and a picture with that later on. So um, th that was a really great course. And people from that course have kept in touch with each other. Um, and connections have been made both within Dublin, but also regionally. And I think that regional connection is very important. And then we had the first training event with the Irish Defence Forces. Um, and that was led by Peter and Bobby Frail. Again, we were able to um, seek funding from the Heritage Council of Ireland. I, sh I should sort of say without them, any of the events that you're seeing that I'm talking about would not have happened. Blue Shield Ireland doesn't have any funding at all, um, but we can apply through a grant system to the Heritage Council of Ireland, and that gets us and secures us some funding for specific events. But I have to say, lack of funding is something that does not keep me up at night, but does concern me. Um, but this was a great another three-day uh, training event, and um, we had 13 officers from the 2nd Brigade of the Irish Defence Force, and we had three heritage professionals. Um, and again, both Peter and Bobby led the training event, um, and then it did include some um, presentations from ourselves from the current committee, uh, both myself and Patricia uh, gave presentations as well. So back to this lovely <laughs> photo of the committee. And I hear I've just kind of listed the different areas um, that really I'm beginning to see the strengths of the committee members um, come forward and, and what they're interested in doing. And I think I'm beginning to see how the, the, the committee is really gelling um, and where people have different strengths and where, where they're beginning to work together. Because I think one of the challenges for Blue Shield in any country um, is, is making it relevant both um, for the country. We know we're relevant in an international platform uh, and the providing of CPP training and engaging with the military does, does that um, and also helping. But I think making sure that people can see the, the, 
the the value of an organization um, like Blue Shield within their own country is actually um, something that we're we're quite keen to 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 pin down and make sure that people, because I feel if people understand the value of us, then hopefully they'll be more supportive of us. And, and people generally are incredibly supportive, but I just, we need to get that up to the next step. Um, and that would be one of the main aims. So you can see sort of my strengths would be emergency planning. Obviously I'm a senior conservator in the National Archives. So um, I kind of have that under my belt in terms of looking after um, a, a massive collection um, in terms of disaster management, recovery and planning. Um, similarly, Jessica uh, is a conservator um, with about 25, 30 years experience. Um, but Jessica's strength is she's also in ICOM um, and she's the current treasurer of ICOM Ireland. And that strength of coordinating with our partner organisations is also something that we have, I think, been quite successful um, in leaning and, and um, working with them. And we hope to continue that. We've got uh, Dan, who's um, a commandant in um, the I IDF and military history is obviously, uh, he's also um, the director of the um, military archives in Dublin. And so military history and historic properties and military st structures are of interest to him. And again, I'll talk about that in a couple of slides. Uh, Helena's a uh, conservation architect with Fingal County Council and so climate action and prevention and how that's affecting uh, historic structures is um, her area of specialty. Susie's um, in Trinity College um, Library, um, a keeper of preservation there um, and so legal compliance policy and implementation and disaster recovery for documentary heritage would be her strengths. Um, Elizabeth Ann is a, a the um, librarian of a very small, bespoke and beautiful library um, since, uh, in St Stephen's Hospital in the city centre in Dublin um, with a historic collection. Um, and Elizabeth Ann is, joins us from the Irish um, or the International Library Federations Association. Um, so she has that uh, specialty um, brought to the table. Uh, Fergal is a uh, conservation architect with the OPW. Um, and he's specifically uh, charged at the minute with looking after um, historic monument sites in County Kerry, um, more specifically, and the one that's best known to everybody would obviously be the World Heritage Site of Skellig Michael. But the impact of climate and coastal erosion on these sites in, in County Kerry is of particular interest, and they're doing some fantastic work um, in, in this area, um, just in terms of monitoring um, climate change. And then Patricia is a lecturer in um, UCD and her speciality is um, World Heritage Sites and CPC, CPP Procedures in Conflict Zones. So that gives you a flavour of, of who we are and what we're bringing to the table in Ireland. Um, in terms of capacity building, um, this is what we've been doing. And when I said um, we've been quite successful. Um, we haven't had our own website as such. We haven't had the, the funding and the money to do that. Um, and it is something we'd like to do, but we looked at our partner organizations and we got them to host information about ourselves on them. So this is the, a screenshot of the page from ICOM Ireland. We also are on ICOMOS Ireland on their website and they've just uh, redone their website. So it's still, um, there are a few issues with the ICOMOS Ireland site, but primarily we're there on, on the landing page. There's a blue screen, uh, blue shield tab that you can find out more information about us. Um, and I have the links to that on the very last slide as well. Um, you can see here our capacity building aims for 2021 were to deliver at least two public lectures. And I think I have to hats off to the committee. I'm absolutely thrilled. We're actually up to about four in the book um, for, for this year. But I'll talk about those a bit further on. One of the things that, that we have been involved in and we were asked to participate and um, invited to draft was guidance for first responders um, to an emergency situation, on a cultural property or heritage site. And this is incredibly significant because this would be a document that will sit within the National Directorate for Fire and Emergency Management. Um, and being invited to do that um, 
happened in uh, 2019. Um, and so we've we've done that. We've drafted a document um, using all our expert, expertise and experience with um, emergency planning. And we've given two case studies, which actually both happened back in 2009, were pretty significant um, in Ireland. There, this is a photograph of the Glucksman Gallery in the University College Cork. And there was a significant flood as you can see, um, in November 2009, they had stored all their artworks in the basement of this um, gallery. It was on a floodplain. It had been built in a floodplain. And as a result, well, this is the result of, of that flood. Um, conservators from the professional organisation um, in Ireland responded at the time and went down to provide assistance. Um, and were highly successful. I think in fairness, I think they only lost one artwork out of the whole um, uh, experience. And then in December 2009, on Christmas Eve, St Mel's Cathedral in Longford was engulfed in a fire. Um, and again, that was a major um, incident. And at that stage, it was conservators, primarily from the National Museum of Ireland, went down to, to provide assistance um, in the aftermath. Um, so we've been able to use our experience from both those by talking to the conservators at the time. I mean, St Mel's Cathedral is now, it's, it's um, a wonderful case study, an example of it. It's been fully restored. But as um, incidences and things that happened, they're incredibly good, very solid case studies for people here who perhaps haven't had that experience of dealing with cultural property or heritage sites and coming to them for the first time. So we've also, um, we're very active at the minute in our newly formed uh, uh, government department, which is of housing, local government and heritage. So heritage is no longer with arts and culture and has been um, moved. And it probably makes more sense that it's, it sits within this government department. So they're currently working on a climate change adaptation sec sectorial plan for building and built an architectural heritage. Um, and we're at the table there with those very large meetings, um, but we've been identified and are in the planning stages of doing regional um, training courses for, again, uh, architectural um, uh, and heritage uh, first responders. So again, people who come to a site if there's been an incident um, and just to give them some guidelines and some backgrounds and some knowledge and just to say that there's support here if something does happen. So one thing, again, where I can see how the, the, the um, committee is really beginning to work together is one thing that came um, up very recently was protecting military heritage. Um, and this started with in recently just in May a uh, lookout post which is this funny little building that there were 83 of them all around the coast of Ireland and they were built during as we called it the emergency which was um, during the, the second world war years um, and they were basically on the lookout um, around the coast to see if Ireland was going to be invaded by the Germans um, and there are only 30 nine of them I think left in existence today and they're in various states of repair and unfortunately one in May 2021 was destroyed and um, there are investigations as to the why and the how um, and rather than get into the prosecuting prosecuting end of things, I mean, that's very much for the authorities and for County Wexford. What we decided to try and do was try and raise awareness about the significance of them. They're not um, historic properties, they're not listed on any list, um, and they are incredibly vulnerable. Um, so we responded actually by doing a podcast um, between myself, Dan, uh, in the military archives, and uh, historian Michael Kennedy, who has, has written, um, the, literally written the book on the lookout posts um, in Ireland. And the, the podcast is available to listen to where we're just trying to raise awareness. And that has been successful um, in the sense that now Dan and myself have been in invited to speak at uh, hopefully a conference that's hoping to happen at the end of the year about the lookout posts that's going to be happening out of UCD. 
Um, and then Dan's also been asked to speak to heritage officers um, as well about the significance of them. And I was happened to be on holiday last week in County Sligo, and um, I gave my lo my lovely husband the mission of saying, "Let's go and find some lookout posts," because we realised there were there were three, and we got to two of them. We got to this one in Lenadoon Point uh, in County Sligo, um, and as you can see, it was surrounded by an electric fence because it's on uh, farmers' land, and we weren't able to access it. And you can see it's in quite bad repair. And then we got to another one at a place, a beautiful location called Oris Head. Um, and the one at Oris Head had an infographic panel. and um, It has been um, restored by the um, local community with the support of Sligo Heritage, um, the Sligo Heritage Officer and Sligo County Council. So there's a wonderful example uh, and a wonderful knowledge of these. And just to try and sort of raise this awareness, but also um, through the committee, Dan and uh, Helena have been discussing who are the best people to talk to in terms of the heritage officers and conservation architects. Um, so our planned events for uh, 2021, as I say, we've now got uh, four presentations that we'll be giving about Blue Shield and Blue Shield in Ireland to these various networks and committees. Um, we've been doing a social media campaign both on Twitter and Facebook, um, and that's been quite successful. I mean, we've not a massive following on Twitter. It's quite bespoke. But even by doing the posts every twice a week about the committee members, about the work that we do, has actually seen an increase um, on our Twitter followings. Um, and I think that's something that's that's we're going to continue. Um, and Facebook definitely we're, we're stronger on Facebook, a lot more followers on Facebook than on Twitter. And then future events for 2021 and 22 is we have in the diary um, by by working with ICOM Ireland. Um, we're going to hold a one day, well, probably online symposium, because um, Simon Lambert has been invited to be the keynote and Simon's in Canada. Um, and Simon is mainly involved in, um, as it says here, preventive conservation, but also he's been uh, instrumental in implementing REORG, which is an ICROM pro program. Um, and he's been leading uh, REORG Canada. So um, we're looking forward to that. And that will be, we're hoping, REORG is as a, an ICOM um, program, uh, an excellent one that's very good for small county museums. And we're hoping that's why if we do um, an event with the Irish, um, with ICOM Ireland uh, for International Museums Day on 2022, that um, we will have a wide reach to the audiences because we'll get them both to think about their collections as well as disaster planning and managing the collections and emergency planning there. And then towards the end of this year, we're hoping to repeat the CPP training, um, again, being led by Peter in the UN Peacekeeping School, uh, which is down in County Cold there. And I think this is my last slide. Yep, so that's our Facebook page. Um, our Twitter account and the two websites where we have um, information about Blue Shield in Ireland. So that's me and I'm going to stop sharing now. Thank you for uh, listening.